Now on Toledo News this morning, paint at the pump. How drivers are reacting to sky high gas prices. Plus, I'm in downtown Toledo previewing what you can expect for St. Patrick's Day right here at the Blarney. And March Madness, but I'm not talking sports, previewing events happening in our community. Good Saturday morning. My name is Jaden Jefferson and welcome to Toledo News this morning. Prices are up for pretty much everything, especially gas at the pump. If you've been around the glass city recently, you've likely noticed one thing that's consistent. Gas prices are up. So how do drivers like yourself feel about the whole thing? Well, one driver I spoke to in particular says she is very frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I don't understand where this is coming from. Just in the last week, we have jumped up almost double. I, it takes me almost double to fill up my tank. My six-year-old son it can't even get to his minimum wage job back and forth. I still have to go to work, but yet work is still the same pay. It's frustrating. It's absolutely frustrating. For about half an hour, I observed drivers come and go at the speedway at the corner of Doran Reynolds, which is charging $4.09 a gallon. Others I talked to off camera, so they too are up in arms over paying so much just to fuel up. Wireman says she never anticipated prices getting as high as they are now, with many in states like California paying up to five, six, even seven dollars a gallon. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I think it was six months ago we were paying a dollar ninety nine. It's it's crazy. It's so frustrating because you have to pay for gas to get back and forth to work to do your daily task. No more taking a cruise down the road to enjoy your sunny day. It's it's ridiculous. With prices up at the pump, you're probably wondering how you can save. Take less trips, make sure you don't have heavy objects in your car, which requires it to use more fuel. And remember, not all stations are charging more than $4. At Gas and Auto Service in Sylvania, the price sits at just $3.59 a gallon, but that could, of course, change. For updates, visit ToledoGasPrices.com. Reporting in Toledo, I'm Jaden Jefferson. Many members of a crucial population remain unprotected from COVID-19, but why? Vaccine hesitancy in the black community is real, locally and nationally. And Toledo NAACP President Willie Perryman Jr. says there are ways of combating it. Let's get vaccinated. I want to encourage um, all of our listeners, all of our viewers, let's get vaccinated. Let's learn as much as we can. Let's identify all of the research. Let's continue to be informed. And then let's practice all of those um, protocols that are necessary it's also important to note that minority communities have been devastated by COVID-19, far worse than other groups, a culmination of health and financial disparities, as well as misinformation about the virus, which has spread rapidly. I had a chance to sit down with the youngest, as well as the first black mayor of Hudson, New York. Mayor Kamal Johnson made history in 2019 and was reelected recently in 2021. Johnson is already trekking the path to a bright future for the small town in New York. Being the youngest and also the uh, first uh, black mayor, and uh, the city of Hudson's history, uh, you know, there was a lot of pressure. Um, you know, I had to, I felt like I had an entire city, you know, on, on my back. Our full interview is posted now, right here on YouTube. On this week's Community Focus, I'll be joined by ProMedica President and CEO, Randy Ostra, to discuss the healthcare system's presenting sponsor title with the 2027 U.S. Women's Open, as well as the impact of COVID-19 on healthcare workers. The realization here is that our health and well-being is much more um, complex than that. It has a lot to do with you know, where you're born, um, you know, the community you're born into. Community Focus airs Sunday at 11 a.m. right here on YouTube. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. I checked in with the Blarney Irish Pub in downtown Toledo to see how they're preparing. I'm Jaden Jefferson, and I'm here at the Blarney Irish Pub in downtown Toledo. And this is a hot spot when St. Patrick's Day comes to town. So kind of give me an idea of what you're expecting. Well, it is the spot, not just the hot spot, the spot to be for St. Patrick's Day. Typically, we have a town out on the street, but this year, uh, because of the pandemic, we kind of scaled that back a little bit, and uh, we're going to have the street closed, but no tent. And past years here, like you mentioned, have been very busy. You guys get out, get a big crowd out here. So now, emerging from this pandemic, what are you expecting it to be like? Well, we're not totally peeling the Band-Aid off on this one, but uh, it's pretty darn close. I mean, we'll have the tables and chairs out of here, and uh, this place will be pretty packed. In the pandemic, it had an impact on a lot of local businesses, restaurants, bars. So what was that impact here at the Blarney? Well, I mean, it, we weren't able to have a tent, you know, for St. Patrick's Day. So that absolutely affected us in, uh, you know, having the people that we typically have, usually thousands down to hundreds. 
So it definitely impacted us. And I know patrons are glad to be back as well, you know, after all the closures that came early in the pandemic. So we have, you know, as we started to have more people come in, what has been their reactions to being able to kind of have some normalcy back in their lives? Well, yeah, I mean, being able to have the masks off and, you know, people being vaccinated and, and feeling pretty confident about being out in the space again, uh, I think we're starting to get back to normal. And if people do want to come out, have a great time on St. Patrick's Day, what are some things they should know and uh, ideas you have for them? Well, I mean, obviously, number one, you want to be safe. So, uh, you know, you hit your Uber, get your taxis, uh, be safe. You know, there's a hotel downtown. You can uh, stay at the Renaissance. Uh, just, you know, be smart. Yes, be smart. That's the words we have every holiday where, you know, alcohol can get involved. So definitely be safe and have a great time. Reporting in downtown Toledo, I'm Jaden Jefferson. The Toledo Lucas County Public Library has a few events coming up that may be of interest to you. I spoke with Kelsey Rader of the library for more. Give me an idea of some upcoming events at the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Yeah, we have a lot of different things that are happening like usual. You can come to any of our 20 locations and check out a book. You can check out um, the spaces. You can come, you know, sit and study. But we also have a lot of things that are going on, um, especially right now with it being March. We have a lot of Women's History Month. Um, programs happening. So we have book groups and we have um, a really cool exhibit here at Main Library and we have a podcast that you can listen to that's a walking tour so you can go explore um, some local neighborhoods and listen to some of the influential women in the area. One of the many events that are coming up at the library is an autism provider job fair which is happening at the Main Library in April. So kind of give people an idea of what they can expect if they're looking to attend to get a job in that industry. Yeah, so that is on Wednesday, April 6th from 2 to 6 p.m. And that is at Main Library. So you can come. There will be interviews being conducted on the spot, which is great. So if you're looking for a new um, you know, career path, if you're looking for something like that, you can come and see what opportunities are available. And so we're just really excited that we can be a space um, that they can come and they can hold those interviews. Well, spring break is fast approaching for many area students and summer is coming even faster. So what can students and kids in our area expect if they're going to be partaking in some library programs this summer? Yeah, so right now we do have our story times happening. So if you're looking to get out of the house for a little bit, you can come to our story times. Those will continue in the spring and summer as well. So once the kids start uh, having those school breaks, once they're on summer break, it'll be a really great um, time for you to get out of the house. Uh, maybe check out library branches that you haven't been at yet and you can um, experience those different story times. But we also have so many other programs. Uh, we have chess club on Saturday mornings that's become really popular. Uh, if you don't know how to play chess, you can still come and participate and you, maybe you'll learn a new skill. Um, and we just have so many different programs. We also have a lot of adult programs too, not only for kids. Uh, we have a barista at home going on right now and we have some programs with Toledo Grows in the Metro Park. So if you're wanting to get out of the house, you're wanting to learn a new skill, wanting to meet new friends, I mean, the library is the place to come. I know that for a fact, and I think I also need to improve my chess game. So it looks like I might have to partake in that program. Um, you know, how has the community responded to these various programs that have been happening? Because really it is community centric. You know, there really is something for everyone. If you want to join one of those programs, you'll find something that you are interested in. I just took one of our um, flower programs and thought that was so much fun. I need to learn more about having a green thumb. And so it was really fun to do that and just interact with people in the community that I, you know, I don't know. So that's a really fun one. And it's just, I think as the weather gets warmer, people are really excited to be outside and just be able to, um, you know, go do things in the community. And so we're really excited to be a place that people can come. We'll have some of those outdoor activities um, in the summer that people can come and borrow and use on our different lawns. Uh, we have a rooftop garden here at Main Library you can come to and have lunch or, you know, grab a book and read in the sun. It's really just um, a hub for people that no matter what you're looking to do, you know, think of the library first and come here. For those people that are looking to come to the library, partake in all of these different events and uh, happenings at the library, how can they find updates? So you can visit any of our 20 locations. We are open and we have our hours on our website as well. But you can head over to our website as well to find uh, all the different resources we have going on. That's toledolibrary.org. Or you can give us a call at 419-259-5200. And we'll be happy to answer any questions.
it's time to get involved. The weather's warming up. So definitely something that uh, I think that a lot of people are going to be looking forward to doing. Kelsey Rader of the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Streaming now on MillionStories.com, Wax to Riches is a show that gives you a look inside the world of entrepreneurs who are putting their focus on the pet industry. I had a chance to speak with the show's host, Dariani Santana. One of the reasons that I host a show is because I love animals so, so, so much. So just being able to hang out with animals every single day while shooting these 12 episodes, it's so fulfilling. And it's not just cats and dogs, even though I love cats and dogs. But I mean, there was guinea pigs, there was alpacas. Our full conversation's up now, right here on YouTube. That's all for the news this morning. Have a great Saturday.